Hello everyone and welcome to the webinar. Today we are talking about uh, Cloud Card online photo submission. Um, I'm looking forward to having this uh, discussion with you today. My name is Tony Erskine and um, if you haven't uh, visited our website yet, I definitely encourage you to do so. There's lots of good information there. It's onlinephotosubmission.com and if you'd like to get a hold of me, um, just remember my name is Tony and you can just email me at Tony at onlinephotosubmission.com. That's T-O-N-Y at onlinephotosubmission.com. Um, and I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions after uh, this or um, set up any other demos that you guys need. Um, so uh, very briefly, what is online photo submission? Uh, you probably already know or you wouldn't be here, but this makes it easy for ID card offices to uh, get photos from their card holders. Uh, one of the really unique things about Cloud Card online photo submission is that uh, it is the the easiest, fastest way to get set up with online photo submission. Literally, uh, we could have you, it says sign up today, accept photos tomorrow. Um, really, to be honest, we could have you set up um, in a few minutes. Uh, so um, we'd love to, uh, to work with you on that and try, try to make it as easy as possible. Uh, a little bit of history here and explain um, sort of why Cloud Card. Um, I came out of uh, Liberty University, which is a large uh, organization, a large institution here on the East Coast. Uh, we had, um, at the time that I was there, about 10 or 15,000 on-campus students, and we had about 100,000 online students. So we were in a really odd place. We were this huge online school, but we also had a, a, a large size on-campus population. Uh, that we had to support, which really kind of forced us into some interesting um, situations. And so working in the uh, you know software development department there, uh, we solved a lot of interesting uh, problems. And that's kind of where the idea for online photo submission came from. Um, I, while I was there, built a different system uh, for Liberty, which they're still using today, um, that supports their FlamesPass software. Uh, so this is sort of the next generation of that um, and kind of gives you the ability to have some of the software that your, you know, the, the giant schools like Liberty have. Um, we are partnered with quite a few uh, other organizations like uh, Blackboard um, offers online photo submission um, powered by Cloud Card. Uh, Color ID can uh, deliver Cloud Card to you um, as well as uh, Vision Database and other, um, other uh, resellers are able to, to do that. So some of our first customers are listed here um, in the sort of hall of honor. Um, and uh, so anyway, lots of good information on the website. Check it out. Um, but let's, uh, you guys didn't come to look at a website, did you? Uh, so let me kind of orient you to um, what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to go through a, a standard workflow. We're going to create some users. Those users will get uh, invitations to Cloud Card, um, and they will, um, and then go ahead and submit a photo as a user, and then um, process that photo the way that you would uh, if you were working in the card office, and you know all the way up to uh, printing the photo, but we want, which we won't do because online photo submission just handles the photo submission. The card printing is you still use. Your, whatever your favorite software is, you'll still continue to use that. Okay, um, so orienting you to the screen, we've got on the left-hand side here, I've got Firefox running, and in my Firefox window, this is a card holder window. So this is somebody who wants to give you their photo. Um, and then on the right-hand side of the, the screen, we've got my sort of administrative view uh, where an Office user would be working. Um, and so this is what the, they would see in the back end of Cloud Card. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, the, there are lots of ways to get um, people into your Cloud Card instance, but that's the first step is, um, you know, get some people in there. Um, one of the most common ways is to um, upload a CSV file. So you could just have, um, you just run a report against your system to generate a CSV file, um, which would look something like, uh, like this. I have an email address. ID number, um, you know, and, and those are really the only two important fields. After that, you can have any number of, um, of custom fields, okay? Um, and we can kind of work with you guys 
on that. I highly recommend um, having a combined name field. It makes searching really easy, okay? Um, but uh, maybe you have a campus uh, that the students are on or whatever. Um, uh, so you can filter by, by campus. That's also uh, really nice. Okay, so that's what the CSV looks like. We're gonna go ahead and upload one. There are other tools that we have um, that can automate this so that, you know, if there's a, you know, some, if you've got a process that kind of runs a report every night and drops it into a folder, then you can have another scheduled job that would just push them into Cloud Card. We've got a full REST API over the, the whole of Cloud Card. So anything that you see me do today through the user interface, we could also automate, okay? So this can be fully integrated, and in fact, it is in lots of situations. I mean, there are dozens of schools uh, that are using this through Blackboard where the whole process uh, is integrated. So, um, so anyway, don't worry about that, but we're just gonna show you the real simple version today. Um, and then if you've got questions about integrations, those get really specific. Just email me again, Tony at onlinephotosubmission.com and I'd be happy to address those. Okay, back to the demo. So um, we jump over here to the people view. Uh, we can add an individual um, uh, person. All we need is their email address there. Uh, but what, we, um, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and do it in bulk, which is more common. So we'll choose our file. Um, and here it is, test people. Okay, this file has a header row, okay? So we'll select that. If you forget to select that it has a header row, no big deal. It'll try to import the header row and it'll fail and it won't, but it won't cause any of the other rows to fail. So don't worry about that. Uh, but you just, uh, this one has a header row and then we go ahead and map which rows which. So we got our email address, our ID number, um, our campus, and looks like I forgot to update my custom field. So I'm just gonna put the name into the notes field, okay? and we'll go ahead and click import. Okay, so this can take a little bit of, uh, of time depending on how big your CSV is. It takes a, a generally about a second per uh, user, and the reason is that um, actual emails are getting sent out, and SMTP is a pretty old and slow protocol, um, so uh, those emails you know, just take a while to get sent out. Uh, but if you look down here, we can see all three of those emails were successfully imported, um, you get kind of a row by row analysis. Um, it shows you up here though, your aggregate results, how many were imported successfully, how many, you know, were already in the system. And then did you have any duplicates in the file? You know, that lets you see that. And then if there were any rows that were just, you know, plain old errors, you know, maybe missing an email address or something, those will let you know there. And then, you, like I said, row by row, you can look through. Um, but let's go ahead and jump back over to Firefox on the left-hand side of the screen. We can see that I've I've gotten an invitation uh, to Cloud Card. So here it is. Um, now, this is a pretty vanilla you know, invitation. Um, you know, we've got uh, something a little nicer, and this one uh, is one that the, uh, the Mercer University down in Georgia did, and they did a good job on it, and, so, and they agreed to let us uh, share it with folks. Um, so this shows all the different parts of the email that you can customize and make your own. The most important part is this from address. Okay, up here at the top, um, you definitely want to um, let us know what your email address is and then we'll, val we'll verify it so that um, the emails can come directly from your address um, or else uh, the, you know, you, you just get, you don't get as many students opening the emails if they come from, you know, onlinephotosubmission.com. They're like, well, what's that? Okay, but everybody knows what, you know, bear card photo at, at mercer.edu is, okay? And then you can set up a banner image and all, you know, you know, customize all the other parts of this except for this little button right here. This little button is the link that lets you into Cloud Card. And I'm gonna just park on it for just a second because this is one of the cool innovations um, of Cloud Card. What is behind this button is a super secure security token, all right, that we created um, and what it allows you to do is um, it allows you to log into Cloud Card. Um, and because you are in your email, right, you've already authenticated, you know, um, with an email address that we trust, right? So it works very similar to password reset links, if you will. You know, like, okay, we know you got your email, so we can trust that you're the right person. Um, and then it allows you directly into the system without having to set up a username and password, right? 
which is a hassle. And what we realized with um, at Liberty um, was that students, any barrier right that you put in between them and, and getting their photo um, really decreases the number of, uh, of photos that successfully get submitted. Um, and then the students will just, you know, if it takes a couple of minutes, the students will quit, then they'll come stand in line for an hour and then they'll be upset with you that they're standing in line for an hour when they could have uploaded their photo. Um, so it's not fair, but it's reality, okay? So we need to make this as easy as possible. And frankly, typing in a password on a phone with your thumbs is just not easy and it will cause a lot of students to quit. So we worked around it. We had to innovate to get past that. And you're gonna see that our experience at, at a university, you know, where we've, you know, already learned these lessons the hard way is, is going to benefit you guys. So um, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to process through um, a photo. And you're going to see how quickly uh, it can happen. Remember I said about two minutes is sort of our, our barrier. That was our initial target. Um, so let's jump over to that actual email again. And we're going to go ahead and click. And I'll, we'll see how quick we can do this. The first thing we're going to see... Um, is the, the login link getting processed, and then we come to the terms and conditions page. Okay, so here I am on the terms and conditions page. If you um, don't have terms and conditions, this page can be skipped completely, uh, but this allows you to uh, force the user to accept the terms and conditions. On the left side of the screen, we see fully customizable photo requirements, okay? And then this your card holder has the option of taking a photo with their device or uploading a photo that's already on the device, which that's what we're gonna choose. And I'm going to take this teenage guy right here who is younger and better looking than I am. We're going to go ahead and just upload him. And we're done. Okay, That whole process, including me talking about the terms and conditions and the photo requirements, took less than a minute. Okay, um, And you've already got that photo. Okay, If they want to review the photo, they can. If they want to edit the photo, you've got regular tools for editing, rotating, you know, and cropping the photo. Um, but they don't have to. The photo is already there. You've got it. Okay. Um, now we're going to show you some of the other um, cool features and some of the things that are happening behind the scenes. So if we jump back over here to photos, we're going to see that photo has already been submitted. Okay. Here it is on my, you know, remember the left side of my screen, this is my student. Okay. And the right hand side of my screen, this is my uh, office user. Now I say student, but it could be a staff member over here. Okay, um, uh, you know, it could be a, you know, any, any staff member, you know, contractor or whatever, anybody that gets a card from you. Um, now, look what just popped up over here. Instant photo feedback, okay? Um, now, this is one of the cool innovations that Cloud Card offers that no one else in the industry offers. Um, and that is a, a feature called HelperBot, okay? There's a little AI robot sitting in the background that we've trained to look at photos and to look at a photo like this and say, hey, this looks like a good ID card photo. It's good for identification. And, uh, so look, you know, it says, hey, I've reviewed your photo and I think it looks good. Thank you for your submission. A human will review your photo shortly to confirm. Um, but it does give you a link to go back into Cloud Card if you need to, to edit it. Uh, signs it with HelperBot, you know, and um, if I look back over here on this side of the screen, you can see I had a gray bar under here when I opened this view a minute ago because this photo hadn't yet been classified. So I'm gonna uh, take a step away from this and come back. And look, we can see we have a green bar underneath that photo now. And what, what that is, is HelperBot has you know, classified and color-coded all of the photo submissions that are coming in to your staff members so that they are less likely to make mistakes and also to speed them up, right? I can approve all three of these green photos with one click up here by clicking this green bar, okay? Um, likewise, I can instant, I'm, I'm instantly indicated that, you know, these photos are probably not good photos. Yeah, there's a hat and glasses in this one, multiple people in that one, so those are definitely not good photos. Um, so um, we can go ahead and, uh, you know, deny this photo. Um, you know, I could say multiple people. Now, now let's uh, talk about the denial process just very briefly, okay? Um, on the student side, of course, we optimize for the speed with which the student uploaded the photo. Okay. Well, we didn't want to just focus on making things easy for the student. On the staff member side, we talked to a lot of schools, um, and special thanks to NACU, the National Association of Campus Card Users, and, and really the, the institutions there because you know, they were sort of our original kind of test bed. 
we talked with a lot of them and they said, on average, it takes about 90 seconds to two minutes per student to actually take that photo, okay? Uh, so we said, okay, that's our, that's our goal. We want to stay below 90 seconds. We want to make sure that, um, that processing a photo is easier than taking a picture. Okay. Processing an upload, uploaded photo. Okay. Now we already saw that approving photos is ridiculously easy. I can just click this, approve three of them at once. If I wanted, I could click here and approve the, you know, the whole lot of them. Okay. So approving photos is super easy at, at most. You know, I just need to click the approve button and boom, that photo's been approved. Okay. So approving photos, easy peasy. Okay. But denying photos requires a little more information, right? So if I click this photo, the, the deny button here next to this young lady with the hat and glasses, um, you know, I see here, must not include sunglasses and a hat. Well, this list is exactly the same as the list of photo requirements and it's fully customizable. So whatever your photo requirements are, we can customize them so that they'll be right here. You make one click. So there was actually, sorry, one click for the deny button, one click for whatever the reason is and another click to submit. Three clicks and you're done with denying that photo. So way less than the 90 seconds that it takes to actually take a picture. Um, so, and even that we can actually, you know, Photobot is helping with that because Photobot can not only classify like color code your photos but if you let him um, you know after you get comfortable with him if you let him he'll just approve and deny them for you and then all you'd have to worry about are these yellow photos in the middle the ones that he's not sure about okay so uh, let's jump over so that's uh, that's approving and denying photos um, obviously there's a lot more we could talk about there but I want to kind of keep this brief um, today uh, but if you have questions definitely shoot me an email Tony at online photo um, all right, jumping over to the approved cues, and this actually gives me the opportunity to introduce these cues up here. Um, there are uh, f five different cues: the pending cue, which is where all new photos show up, and that's what we've been looking at. Okay, then there's the approved cue. You know, any photos that have been approved. There's a denied cue. Down, you know, photos that have been downloaded, and then photos you're completely done with, kind of like an archive over here. Okay, so let's say I made a mistake, and oops, I didn't mean to actually approve this one. I can still deny it if I need to. Okay, and the same is true if I was to click over to the denied photos. Um, there's, you know, I can approve them from there if they need to be. So uh, this kind of gives you one last chance to look at your photos, um, and there could be a whole list. You know, there could be 20 or 30 photos in this approved queue. Um, and at this point, we click download photos, um, and any photos in this queue um, get downloaded. Um, and the now again, like I said. We can do any kind of integration we need to, um, and we've already got quite a few. I mean, the, the integration with Blackboard, for instance, is beautiful. We've got a really great integration coming up um, with uh, with IDMS from Vision Database. Um, so we've got an integration. We got integrations with uh, Seaboard. Um, you know, so uh, whatever your school, your 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 um, back end uh, card system is, we can integrate with it. Um, but uh, we're just going to show you the vanilla version, which is just to download a, a CSV file. Okay, so we open that CSV file, and we can see, you know, I've got this photo here, and the photo is, you know, that's the um, ID number that I created, um, and so the photo is named with ID number .jpeg, um, and it was originally um, actually, you know, I built this around uh, what I knew about um, ID. ID Works from Data Card and uh, uh, and Hire One, uh, which is now Bank Mobile. I knew that both of those systems used files that were named with the ID number .jpeg. Uh, you just drop them into a folder, and you know that was that was the import process. And so this is basically designed so that straight out of the box, the vanilla system, I can download that zip file and I can upload it to my shared folder, and there that there they are. They're in ID Works, or they're ready to go to uh, to get uploaded to Bank Mobile. Um, and as I've you know continued to talk with more and more vendors, I've actually found out that um, I, I have yet to run into any vendor that if we give them a folder full of photos that are named with ID number .jpeg, that they can't just import those photos. So this is, like I said, it's just straight out of the box vanilla, um, but there are full integrations that we can do. 
but even the vanilla version is um, you know you know very ubiquitous and it works with lots of different uh, different products that are out there um, so that is the the broad brush strokes uh, so I guess at this point I'm gonna go ahead and um, and start taking questions so if you've got questions um, we'll address those now uh, if you want to drop off and uh, shoot me a question again the uh, the the email address is Tony at online photo um, we'll bring the uh, sorry bring that back up here Tony at online photo uh, shoot me an email um, or go to our website and you can uh, you know you can contact us there schedule a demo uh, whatever you need to uh, so we'll go ahead and, and uh, address those questions also this this is being recorded so if you're watching it on YouTube same thing email me Tony at online photo um, or just uh, put a comment in uh, in the comments below all right so let's go ahead and talk about uh, questions <laughs>